Okay, um, welcome back to the train, everybody. Welcome back to Story Dive. I'm here with Kai. Story Dive! The, uh, <laughs> the succulent, <laughs> amazing Master Kai. Succulent. <laughs> uh, that's, that's something people say, Is that right? the word you chose at the time? Is I that a... if it is. <laughs> okay, maybe not succulent. I'm um, not sure. Um, Dude. <laughs> Hey, it's, it's, uh... Succulent it... <laughs> Succulent means tender, juicy, and tasty. <laughs> hey, hey, see, it, it means good stuff. Uh, I am feeling, I'm not sure how to. Kai is a, he's a very. He's registered a, as a succulent. You've got a, you've got a tasty, you got, a, you got tasty stories, you know? Um, oh, yeah. That's exactly what you meant by succulent. Weekly. Yes. Um, before we get into today's topic, we have the story of the week. Kai, would you like to tell us a story? Like to give, oh, us, yeah. give us the rundown? Uh, I owed a, a story, huh? Yes. So, uh, a story of the week. I'm going to tell the story of what happened to me today. Dude, so, let's hear it. What happened? Uh, quick, quick little back. Oh, I got to title this. Um, <laughs> I feel like I don't title mine, but you dude. always title yours. <laughs> Uh, it's always better with the title. Everyone it's knows true. that. It's true, though. It's true. I I need the title mine. Um. Mind. Okay. What, what's your um, soul? What's your soul telling you? Soul is telling me. Um, I break my legs in a white labyrinth. Wow, that's that's very dramatic. <laughs> I. It is dramatic. <laughs> Are you ready to, yeah, to get into the, the yeah, well, meat of this, I, uh, the succulent of this? How did you, uh, how did you get home? I mean, okay, right, let, let's, let's figure out what happened to your legs. Okay. So, uh, last night I got a message from, um, my landlord. Um, uh, just so you know, this is like a mostly uplifting story. It's just a weird experience. It's right. very weird. Okay. That's good um, to know. It, it was a learning so experience. So I get a message and I'm told, hey, Kai, uh, I need help. There's this client that he, so my landlord owns a moving company. Uh, so I, that's, that is all the information that I will share at this time because that's all I knew at this time, right? Oh, okay. We're, we're withholding information. So for I get purposes. this text. He says, I need, I need help. Um, we're going to move. These this guy needs a bunch of computers packaged and moved to his storage unit. Um, it's going to be from ten thirty to three p.m. Uh, and you'll get eighteen an hour. And I was like, sure, yeah, that's. I don't know why not. Right. If, if if nothing else, it'd be a good kind of learning experience. I can like test out this job, see if I enjoyed it. You know, there's sure, there's pretty yeah. low commitment. Yes, it just sounds like so a I, good... I agree. It, yeah, good opportunity all around. Sounds like. Okay, fast forward to the next day. I wake up at five a.m. for absolutely no reason. Not even sure. I, I have no physical reasons to why I woke up so early. I take Sally to work um, at eight. Or, uh, we leave at seven thirty in the morning to, to right, take her that, to work. Yeah, dang. I don't get to her work till eight forty-five because there's like a traffic jam. Oh man! And I also get a text from the the guy uh, that I'm supposed to be working with, which is not my landlord. I end up learning. Um, oh, he's like, "Hey, can you meet me at nine fifty? And I'm like, "Sure," but it's not really our agreed upon time. But that's okay. Yeah, nine fifty, whatever. Yeah, you're like sure. Uh, but the traffic jam takes up all of my time. So I get home. I straight up, like, I get home. I take a bite out of a quesadilla that's, like, in my fridge. And I chug some, <laughs> like, chugs of milk. And I dart out the door to oh, get to man. this place on time. Wow. And I, I'm driving to this place. I'm kind of like, I don't even know what to expect. It's a, it's a moving company. I'm expecting maybe a warehouse or something. Uh, and I get to the location. And it looks nothing like what he described to me. So I think to myself, that that can't be right. Something's off. So I learned I used I got the wrong address. So now I'm already running late, which is fun. We love that. 
Um, I find the place, and it's it's straight up a like sequestered, really tall hill in the middle of downtown Provo, Utah. It's the most like out of place. It's a different plot of world that just exists in this town. Because <laughs> I drive up this hill, and the two things I see is a what looks to me like a a soccer field slash golf course question mark. And then B, I see two giant estate houses right next to, like on this hill. And that's it. That's it. the only things that are up on top of this hill. Right. Is these like mansions right here. I, I was like, wow. Okay. This, Dude, I didn't know this existed. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. Well, so I meet the guy and we go on a drive. And this, this man is very pleasant. I have absolutely nothing wrong to say about this man. He actually inspired me a lot. I was, I was, I have lots of good things to say about these employers. Um, but we, uh, the next part I learn is that my job isn't in Provo like I thought it was. It's up in Salt Lake. Wait, whoa, whoa, um, whoa. So, yeah, that's crazy. You were told to meet somebody somewhere at 1030, and you ended up meeting them somewhere at 950 just to drive yes. all the way to Salt Lake with them. Correct. Dude, that's, yes. I feel, I, I feel like that was, that, that's important information to know like <laughs> beforehand. Um, beforehand. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, uh, but again, it's like, what, what can you do? You know, whatever. Right. I'm already here. Yeah, I, you're locked. I, I'm, I'm, just, I would I'm locked do it. In. I don't want to back out now. Yeah. You're locked yeah. in. You're like, here we go. I'm, I'm here for it. Yeah. Right. We we go to Salt Lake and uh, we get to the location and these guys, I can only describe them as like skater dudes, but <laughs> tech, tech industry skater dudes. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, I, I, I think I know what you mean. They have their baggy shirts and their like sweatpants and like their their uh, haircuts looked really expensive just for what they were and just really put together dudes but they were wearing like skater clothes kind of thing so it was just kind okay. of an off-putting thing he's like okay yeah uh go take your stuff to the back and and we'll lead you in and as we're driving back the other guy turns to me and says well i'm glad this is real i i wasn't sure if this is a real job or not what? and i thought what you you had me. What would have happened if it wasn't a real job? Would I have still gotten paid, or would I have just driven to Salt Lake for an hour? Yeah, what the was heck? It? What was I supposed to? So anyway, we get in, and the I am going to paint you a picture of a of a place that I I just can. I have no <laughs> idea that a place like this could exist. So it's in one of those like corporate buildings in Salt Lake. Uh, Salt Lake City is a lot like any kind of other city where there's just lots of buildings and each building has a ton of offices, right? Yeah. So it's it's just one of those. But we get up to the fourth floor and I walk in and it's just a really long hallway that, that cuts left to another long hallway. And I guess it's not a hallway. It's like a really long room that connects left to another really long room. And they're just filled with like 60 or more desks and the, each desk has a computer monitor on it and there is like maybe seven other techie dudes and girls there and there is so much freaking beer i cannot even describe beer? to you how many beer cans yeah, beer, like alcohol. Uh, like, were they empty? Wait, where was, so were there people in this room Some, doing were, things, or were they there to help you? Like, yes. No, no, they were they were doing their own thing. So it was like uh, a giant apparently, computer lab it, with tech bros yeah, and, and yeah. tech and tech gals drinking beer. Drink, yeah, and and there were poker. There was a poker table and like all kinds of soda and a snacks poker everywhere. Table? Wait, what do you mean? Yeah. yeah. Wait, what do you mean? What I mean, kind of a place like is a, this? I don't know. That's why I was trying to tell you. I'm just painting the image because I have not. I don't. I'm not sure what to describe 
this is, place as like yeah, it's just a venue as like, that is used for so many different things okay because like when you first described it i'm like oh this is an office building you know oh this is it a, is it is an office building but it doesn't seem like one it seems like it's like a weird recreational like you know like uh you know something like you know those businesses where you go in and you like pay a little bit of money and you can get in and use their computers and it's like people go there to like play games right. hang out that's what it seems like. Yeah. Uh, no, nope, it's not that at all. It's <laughs> nothing like that. <laughs> like, what do you mean? That's crazy. Like, what did they do? Well, there? So like, I've learned what, people... what it was. So, so I, I learned a little bit in. Well, okay. Also, there was this giant dog, which was a, a nice doggo, but it was a big white dog. I was just kind of chilling in the facility with everyone oh, else. Well, so nice. I'm like pushing beer cans out of the way to get rid of these computers because i'm supposed to i we have to pack them all up and and put them away right but yeah. these dudes they like don't talk to me maybe they sort of talk to me but a lot of them look basically hungover and they're talking about this like gnarly rager they they had the night before <laughs> and i'm starting to put the pieces together that like it's it's kind of like a really expensive techie frat party it's funny. Mm. Was it the like only way I could kind of describe it? No, no. It's so what 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 it ended up being is it's a month long tech convention conglomerate think tank. Month long? Where yeah, so people will stay there for a month. And it's it's essentially a think tank where you take your your business, your project, your startup, or whatever, your software that you're developing, and you work on it just in that open space and you're able to kind of just grab the the person next to you and kind of say uh what what do you think what should i do with this and they're able to give tips and, and stuff like that interesting yeah so like so kind of like a game jam where like everybody's do, working on the same stuff so it kind of like uplifts everybody and like creates an environment where everybody can like give feedback yeah so in I reality mean, cool. it actually was an interesting experience it just was like surprisingly uh at first glance that was not my impression at all my right. impression was this is of a beer rager frat party like yeah that, like that, a, that's like all i had to party, go off of. i feel like totally fits the vibe that you were describing but yeah that that seems like a way more cool and thought out event um month long yeah that's, yeah that's a and, long time. and the, these these guys were actually like nice dudes when they did talk to me. I, I did have the uh, impression, possibly, that a couple of them might have been hungover, but that's I can't. Right, Makes it sense. would be rude of me to just like outright state that because I'm not sure. Right. Yeah. So anyway, mm -hmm. we take these these sixty or so monitors, which takes us. It surprisingly takes a long time to unplug a monitor and disassemble it and put it back into its like box with the styrofoam and stuff yeah it takes a long, long time we're talking like four to five minutes per thing which if it's 60 monitors then you're looking at something like two and a half hours and i'm just standing on my feet the whole time walking back and forth this thing kind of trying not to bump into the, any of the guys or the dog that's right. like just kind of going everywhere after two and a half hours uh we're like okay we're ready to take this to the thing and one of the dudes says Oh, do you have the key? No. Why would we have the key? Oh, someone's supposed to give you a key. Hey, and he like said someone else's name. I can't remember the name anymore. He's like, do you have a key? And he's like, oh, no. I left it at the house. <laughs> what? No, Man, I got to I gotta go promo? get it. No, <laughs> yeah. shot, no, no. Dude. The, the. His his house in Salt Lake, but it's oh, still it takes oh, a long time goodness. to travel anywhere in Salt yes, Lake. I, but he essentially true. said, "Oh, it's it's going to take me like forty five minutes to go get that key." And me and the other guy were just kind of like, "Okay, well, I guess we'll keep packing whatever we can <laughs> in the truck." And so we just sat and waited for forty five minutes ish. It, it wasn't necessarily waiting, but it did. It was a chunk of time that we were just on our feet for not much of a reason. Yeah, just because he we finally to get to. Right. Yeah, we finally get to the the thing, and it's. I don't know if you've ever been to storage units. I 
generally picture them as garages, like outdoors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to um, units. Um, that yeah, I, this was not I've that. Seen, I've seen a couple that are indoors, but uh, I know what you mean. Where most of them is, you can see the garage doors like lined up outside with like usually they're yeah, orange or yeah. green or blue or whatever the company is. But yeah, yeah. What were these ones yeah, like? Sure. This is you go into the back, and they open up these like big green industrial doors into basically a cement labyrinth and and that's it it's just like these white walls that are barely even lit there's not a single window and we're carting these these things back to the the guy shows us where we're supposed to take it right and they just kind of walks away and me and my my partner were like I, I we had to then navigate back to the truck ourselves and there were a couple times where I thought we were kind of lost for a second. <laughs> and this is where it started to feel like my knees were breaking because we've been carrying these monitors all day long at this point for like four or five hours now. Yeah. So that, that's a I'm time. super tired. My legs are so tired and I'm like dehydrated. I hadn't eaten anything other than like that quesadilla. And um, you're just stuck in this like dimly lit like series of cement hallways yeah yep and you, you <laughs> until we sure find the, the one yeah, yeah that's crazy. Uh, i mean everything finally worked out right everything worked out i got home safe obviously right but the whole experience was just like this was not what i was expecting yeah in the slightest no like... and even anything that i was expecting this is so far off of what i was expecting <laughs> That I, I there are just not even words. Yeah, it's like when you described it, I'm like, oh, he's just gonna go to some dude's house nearby and help him move a few computers. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. From like it was his, not that like his in basement, the slightest. You're gonna move it from the basement to the car, and then you're gonna take that car to another guy's house and move it into that guy's house, and it's gonna take like yeah, you know, maybe two to three hours, and then you go back home, and it's like. Yeah, this that that what you told was a completely different. That was a completely different circumstance. That was crazy. Yeah, I, and like I didn't even get home. Like I got home and then I jumped on here to to do a podcast to do the yeah. podcast. That's like that's that's been my day. Is hey, is that? Well, so anyway, you were able. To, that is my story. Yeah, you were able to get a story of the week out of it. So I say it's a win. Um, but I do hope your legs recover soon um <laughs> thank you uh but yeah that's I also got a shirt i'm gonna send you a picture of the of the shirt oh, dude. they handed me a shirt that they got from the was it related from the convention to oh my gosh dude that's a great shirt <laughs> so, it is I, a great shirt um if... is is that so it says f-o-c-k it right um uh that's all it, it says that's, it, that's is the only it related thing on the shirt. to anything like is that like a slogan? Yeah, it's just for... a shirt that was somehow in integrated into the convention. I have no idea. I never got any context as to what this shirt is or how who it belongs to or why. Well, hey, they that's... just were like, you want a shirt? And I'm it's... like, uh, sure. And then they handed it to me and then left. It's a and memento. I didn't even have a chance to be like, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a memento, it's a memento to, re to remember the story by. Uh, that's awesome. Um, well, Great, dude. Um, so to segue into today's topic, I don't know if you've been able to put it together by looking at the the title of the video or the uh, the the podcast on Spotify or wherever you listen to it. Um, but I'll ask Kai because, um, what point of view do you think you used when you were telling your story? Oh, do you definitely know? first person. Definitely for yes, uh, that would be correct. Um, so today I, I want to talk about points of view in storytelling, and I feel like it's something people should talk about more because uh, I think it's actually a very interesting topic because every story uses it. Real quick, can I get a can I get a doubloon for being Dude, for getting it right? Absolutely, yes. I'm gonna give you five doubloons actually. One for Yay. one for each leg broken. Uh, all five, of, <laughs> all five of my legs are broken. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to start out by asking you, Kai, what 
do you what are all of the different points of view that you can use in a story just off oh. the top of your head do you do you know i feel like this should be pretty easy uh i mean there's there's first perspective first person first person yes technically i guess there is a second person perspective there. but i'm actually kind of foggy on what that means and i do know there's a third person perspective but yes. i'm not really sure what a fourth person perspective is i guess it would be like breaking the fourth wall kind of thing like the imaginary mm. fourth wall is the fourth perspective fourth person yeah but i don't know if that's true or not uh that's as far as it gets to me uh <laughs> five's a crowd we don't we don't <laughs> like five crowd. um okay so are you locking it in are you saying that first through fourth person there can only be four perspectives, and <laughs> anything beyond that is preposterous and insanity. Well, I'm going to give you another doubloon because you are spot on. There, those are as no far, way. As it far, is insanity. Don't do fifth perspective, knowledge. guys. It I, just doesn't work. I'm not sure if there's more perspectives. Maybe there is a fifth perspective out there, um, but as far as I know, there's only the four. Okay, so I'm going to follow up by asking you another question. Um, oh my gosh, this is a quiz episode. <laughs> um, what do you think is the most common point of view? Like, oh, that's a and, good question. And I know that this varies. We're just going to say maybe generically for, for story writing. Um, but I think this does apply to all mediums. I just know that like, uh, depending on your medium will kind of dictate which point of view is the most popular. But just off off the bat, which one do you think is the most used in general? Uh, I think probably, well, okay. I think it would help me if I knew what the parameters of each okay, perspective that's, are. That's true. Yeah, let's go through them. Um, so we're going to start with first person, which has, you know, the uh, whatever you call them, the, the I, me, my, us, we. Um, you mainly just I, me, and my, like talking about uh, yourself. First person is uh, usually used to describe, it's like how we talk, right? So if I was like, this is how my day has been, you know, like I'm talking in first person, just like you said with your story. Um, so, okay. Yeah. Um, first person. Well, so let, 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 let's go through each one. And I'm going to kind of like ask you what you think, what do you think first person does for storytelling? Um, like, what do you think it adds to the story? Um, Cause I, I have some okay. things written down here and I just want to know your thoughts. And then I, I'll, I'll tell you what I've learned afterwards. Okay. Well, for the record to set it as straight as an arrow, I'm thinking first person is probably the most popular form of storytelling or at least like the most commonly used perspective mm, i'm locking okay. that in first person okay because it's all about me right now it's all about we why don't why don't we well, let's go uh, through them all like i'm gonna i'm gonna accept your answer but uh, let's go through them all and if you want to change it by the time we're done going through leave them all. me in suspense okay um and and just just to specify um each one of these perspectives it is a perspective right so using a different perspective gives you different things in the story so i, I i'm going to rephrase my question here to like if if you were to use first person in one of your stories what would first person what kind of a perspective would that give you in a story as opposed to like something else like why why use that one ah i understand the question finally it took me a second. I, it was hard um, for me to come up with. Honestly, I was like, "How do I? How do I explain this?" It's a really good question. Extremely thought provoking. Um, listeners, you you think about it too, as I also stew on it for a second, and, and give your answers in the comments. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Give your answers before we we spoil them for you. You know, you got you got to put them down before yeah. they come. Otherwise, it doesn't count. You know. We'll put it. We'll put it. 20 minute pause in yes. in between whatever we're talking about now and what we talk about in a minute and you can have that 20 minutes just to just to think you know 
Yeah. Just to just... ponder this. But the... while you ponder it, I'm going to be given my answer. <laughs> okay. okay. He's going he's gonna to uh, talk um... during the pause. We're going to keep talking during this 20 minute pause. Um, yeah, just keep keep pondering. Sure. Yeah. Why first person? Why do why do first person? Why not just do third person? Okay. So, I think in my mind, first person allows you to uniquely get into a specific person's head and mm -hmm. kind of get that inner monologue that they yeah. would have. So you can you can get what they think about a situation, not necessarily everything that they do in a situation, but more specifically what they think. And how they feel about a situation. Lots of books, I think, are written this way. Yes, yes, I, you are, you're spot on. Because um, I have the first thing I have written down here is putting yourself in their shoes. Um, so I think that is that is the biggest factor on if you're going to do first person. I think books do, like a lot of books do this. Like of course not all of them, um, but it's like if you want. The person experiencing the thing to feel what that character is feeling one of the best ways to do that is to like literally put them in their perspective right like you you you're getting their thoughts you're getting their emotions um getting their shoes yeah you're getting their shoes um and i do have here that i think a lot of romance novels typically are first person because they want you to put yourself in that position a lot of people that read romance novels like to experience it as if it was a romance they were in right um and of course what that, happens if that applies the... to other things too well um, yeah what are you saying what happens if the shoes don't fit <laughs> you know you try and fit yourself in someone's shoes and it doesn't fit i then think what? <sighs> that's an interesting <laughs> that's an interesting question guy i think uh that, that maybe I'll just let that one percolate for a while. Yeah, I know. I'm curious. I'm like, I think that just means that maybe you don't relate with the story or you don't relate with that person's decisions. Or I think that means that maybe the story has some, it may, maybe there's like problems in the pacing of the story. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like if, if the shoes aren't fitting, it could be on the reader's side or it could be on the, the writer's side. I'm not sure, but that it means there's a disconnect. I feel like. Um, okay, we've invented a new terminology. <laughs> I hope it's commonly yeah. used in all forms I, of story. I'm pretty sure that writing. If, if the shoe fits, uh, I'm pretty sure that's a saying that's been around for a while. Um, yeah, I thought that was like to attach blame. If the oh, boot fits, isn't no, that it's, used in like? It's definitely used in a very demeaning way. Uh, in a lot of cases, but I think it mainly means like if, yeah, I guess you're right. I guess, I, I guess it is used kind of in a, in a, in a bad, in a bad light. A lot of the time, like you're trying to make someone, uh, feel bad or you're trying to like, uh, what's the term you're trying to accuse them of something, you know, if the shoe fit, okay. you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So speaking I, of I like shoes, new, I like there's shoe. two of them, which means we should go Ooh. into a, Two, two persons perspective yeah okay so second person's interesting um i honestly am kind of feel like it might be the rarest one because oh, i don't know what it is is that is that your final answer what about what about fourth person yeah i'm i'm locking that in fourth person <laughs> what about fourth i feel <laughs> is often experienced in meta stories <laughs> And or like if you're watching a stage play or something and the okay. stage play interacts with you, it's kind of like fourth person perspective. I, I, so I'm going to say second, it's going to be, I don't know. I don't know if that's fourth person. That's my interpretation of fourth person perspective. That could totally not be it. But I'm locking in as two is the most rare. No one tells stories in twos. It's always threes <laughs> I, or one. So I'm going to, I'm going to give that to you. Uh, another doubloon for you, man. Uh, Heck yeah. I'm, person... I'm rolling in doubloons today. I <laughs> Dude, might take a bath You're making later more doubloons. than I think any of us has ever made before. Um, so I, yeah, second person is the, it's the rarest one. And while I, I might, I've done research on this stuff, but I'm still a little unsure on all this because there is like creative liberties. I feel like with a lot of these perspectives and it's, they can flow really easily right like i feel like first person 
can go into second person and vice versa really easily sometimes depending on like how you're phrasing it or the context or you know what I mean like if you're watching a tv show that is in third person but then it can switch to first person uh and we can get more into that later but I, I do think it's interesting how every perspective here has like a use um but it's not like they're all like set in stone they're they're kind of like uh liquid in a way they they flow sometimes so um second person has the uh what do you call them it has it, it, you, you you use you and your typically when you talk about second person so when do you think you would use second person to tell a story do you have any idea uh do you absolutely the only thing that comes to mind right now is when the narrator is talking to Winnie the Pooh and like <laughs> is telling Winnie the Pooh that he needs to move to the next page to to get the story going. Yes, I actually love that because uh it is the most uncommon at least from what I could tell. So that is correct that it's uncommon. Um and it I think the reason why is cuz it, it typically from what I, I I thought about this for a while, I'm like, what have I seen that has second person storytelling? I have no idea. And I kept thinking about it and I was like, it, it has to do with narration. I feel like when some, when there's a narrator describing what someone is doing, but they're describing it as you and your, they're not describing it as he or him or their name or whatever. Cause that would be third person. Um, it's you and your. So for instance, has anybody like told a story where they're talking about you and they're like a chill went down your spine, you know, or <laughs> your oh, happy that's today. actually really interesting. Or, that's actually really interesting. I, I would like to try and tell a story specifically through second person perspective and yes, see well, how that works. So I thought about this a lot and I realized that, uh, so yes, D and D or sorry, narration, it does it. But I kind of spoiled myself. D and D I think is a, a prime example of this. I feel like when you're playing Dungeons and Dragons, the dungeon master oh. is typically telling the story through second person to you. So he's describing what you are are seeing and experiencing, um, almost like he's your outlet to the the story. Oh, through, but it, so it's like a first oh, person story through him. If it's weird how yeah. that makes sense. Um, but I, 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 I'm not sure what other things would have this. Like, uh, I haven't played Stanley Parable recently, but Stanley Parable might, I don't know if he uses you and your, um, but it's when someone else is using you and your to you. It, that is, so it's, it's very, it is very niche, but, um, I think it actually has a lot of potential to be like a very powerful story. Cause like, like what I said, when I said a chill goes down your spine, like, I feel like it hits different. Second person kind of just hits different than the other ones um, because it, yeah, I know, it, it, I don't know. It's very, it's, it's a lot easier for you to relate because you're not experiencing a story through someone else's eyes. You're like almost experiencing it through yourself in a way. It's, it's very weird. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, any, any other thoughts on second person? Um, or I bet you could totally tell a decent horror story from second perspective Bro. of like just when you said you have a chill down your spine like i could totally like even if in a horror game someone doesn't yet maybe you telling them that they do is kind of like Ugh, i don't know how to feel about that right because you know i feel like the other perspectives have that interpretation or like if you don't agree with the character it's like well i'm not them but like second person's kind of weird because it's like it is you. Um, but yeah, horror would be great because imagine if like someone's telling a second perspective thing and it's like because they're like they're watching you or something um, like that could be really creepy. Um, but anyways, yeah. so on to third person, which I think is, I think you'll be able to get this one. You know, you got he him, you got she her, you got they them. It, it goes on and on, you know. Um it's describing uh, someone from outside of them, right? So it's like, I'm not in their shoes. I'm next to their shoes and I'm watching their shoes, right? That's kind of the deal. So 
what do you think third person is for what those must be some pretty interesting shoes <laughs> yeah 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 you know uh they're the the new uh the new nikes or whatever uh not sponsored um sure i'm totally like I'm just, derailing the super hard machine i'm sorry I, i'm just imagining um, like nikes now for some reason just like walking on their own kind of like uh Band- banjo kazooie if anybody sh- if you know you know the the white shoes that just walk on their own um or like rayman because he technically doesn't have any legs bro yeah i guess he, uh, does he have feet or does he just psychically control his shoes that's the question. I have no idea. I'm sure someone <laughs> possibly listening understands Rayman lore better than we ever could. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. let me know yeah. what that is because I, I have mean, no idea. Yeah. Uh, well, we won't get into that now. I actually, I, I know, I know some things about it, um, but I, I don't, I honestly don't know if he has feet um, that he could not actually, maybe he does. Okay. Anyway, third, <laughs> wait, hold on. I think he does. Okay. Okay. We're getting sidetracked. So why would you use third person? over first person like why why third person uh because you've written a third person story yourself haven't you isn't that you're right i have yeah so like why why tell it from that point of view i guess it gives you i think access to explore multiple different characters at the same time without giving Mm. too much insight into one person's thinking or another does that make sense yeah dude i've actually like if you were to ask me the same question earlier today i would have had like no answer for you um i i feel like your your understanding of it i feel like is exactly where it should be like you're you're nailing these um because I'm, I'm glad i've hit adequate understanding levels <laughs> yeah well it's like um because I people don't really think about perspectives, like because they, it's it's how would you describe it? It's like an invisible thing unless you are like actively looking for it. You know, like, um, you don't really think about points of view like at all. You just kind of think about what's happening on the screen or in the book. Um, but they actually do have these different purposes, and uh, I think you definitely nailed it. But third person is interesting because it actually has two different versions. Um, didn't know that. Now we're getting into yes. So the territory I don't know anything so about. The one that you, what you were saying is that you get to learn about multiple characters. Um, but there's two different versions of third person where there's limited third person and there's multiple third person. And multiple is kind of what you were saying, where you have multiple characters that you're you can. You're, you're you're able to have the thoughts and perspectives of multiple characters without it being I or me, right? It's, it's still he, him, and uh, it's talking about the character as if you were watching them from, from outside or whatever it is. Um, but limited is when you only have, it's still third person, but you only have the one person's perspective. Um, and so uh, I have here that uh, a lot of mystery and horror uh, we'll use limited third person, where it's still third oh, person. like Sherlock is only Sherlock's perspective. Yeah, like you're not you're not but looking it's, it's into it's only anyone his perspective. Else's, yeah, you're not looking at anyone else's brain. Uh, only his, but it's still a third person story. So it's kind of I, I think I feel like third person limited is kind of a hybrid between first person and third person. When full third person is like you know, you're getting this guy's thoughts in perspective and then you're getting this guy's thoughts in perspective and it kind of cuts to multiple different characters and scenes and like, uh, I think okay. Game of Thrones you know, is a good example of multiple because in Game of Thrones, you're, you're, you're moving between so many different characters and what they're thinking and what they're doing and then eventually they all come together and it's, it's, it's really satisfying because you've got to know each one separately. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, so... Interesting question based on this information. Sure. You know Sherlock Vision or like the the point where it's in Robert Downey Jr.'s Sherlock Holmes movies, which are actually really good. Um, you know how it'll go into Sherlock Vision and time will slow down and it'll say exactly everything that's going to happen in the next like point five seconds, yes. you know, the discombobulate yeah. thing. Yeah, dis- discombobulate. Mm-hmm. Uh is that 
Is that would that be classified as first person, or is it limited third person? Because it is his voice narrating what's going to happen, but up to that point, we don't ever hear any other of his thoughts. We don't we don't necessarily hear him being like, and then I did this, and this led to this. This is always a third person's thing. You're kind of watching it from an outside perspective. And that's very, then I, I it just say, happens to be in this one instance, he, you hear his right. thoughts. Because, I mean, you this, I love this question because this kind of goes into where I've been learning about all these perspectives is that they are very fluid. Like, it's sometimes it's hard to nail a definition because in one scene in Sherlock Holmes, you're going to go from a third person perspective to a first person perspective like very quickly so it's like because if he's saying i and me that that is first person so if he's like i will do this and then i will you know do this and then discombobulate or whatever like if he's saying i and me then it is first person in that moment um but if he still does he actually say I or me in that? I can't remember. <laughs> I think he it would make sense for him to do that, right? Um but maybe he doesn't. So maybe maybe a third person limited third person would be what that would classify as. Um because in a way, I I, I think at the end of the day, first person's the whole thing with first person is for you to be able to relate with them and act like you're them. Um, like you can be like, I am this person, um, like very easily. Whereas in that moment, it still kind of feels like Sherlock's doing his thing and we're just watching it. Um, so I, I, I don't know. Uh, it's a good question though. So I'm going to read, I'm going to read the, I found oh, the, you found uh, it? I hope this doesn't derail you too much. I found the whole thing that he says, dude. Yeah. Let um, me before he does his soul discombobulate. So he says, this mustn't register on an emotional level. First, distract. Oh, I yes, I'm 18. Okay. <laughs> um, first, distract target. Then block his blind jab. Counter with the cross to left cheek. Discombobulate. Dazed. He'll attempt a wild haymaker. Yo. Employ elbow block and body shot. Block feral left. Weaken right jaw. Now fracture. Break crack ribs, traumatize solar plexus, dislocate jaw entirely, heel kick to diaphragm. In summary, ears ringing, jaw fractured, three ribs cracked, four broken, diaphragm hemorrhaging, physical recovery six Bro, weeks. This is full crazy. psychological recovery six months. Capacity to spit months. at back of head neutralized. Dude, he's nuts. Like I, I've seen that scene before, but like man, like. Okay, so he uh, he only used one pronoun, and that was heal, which is third person, um, which is very interesting. So I'm not sure because this could even count as fourth person. So let's go let's <laughs> let's go over fourth person real quick uh, and decide if maybe it counts as fourth person. So um, the pronouns for fourth person. Well, do, do you want to, do you have any guesses on what fourth person is? You already kind of gave your guess. It was, uh, what, yeah, what, what it's, was your it's idea like breaking it? the fourth law for breaking the fourth wall, having the, it's kind of like the Sesame street. Like they, they're doing their thing and then suddenly they turn to you and they're like, what do you think? You know? Well, so but remember kids don't touch glass. That's interesting because. I, breaking the fourth wall might actually be second person, which is kind of weird to think about um, because they're talking about you. Um, which I, uh. so from, from what I've seen, fourth person isn't about breaking the fourth wall, which does make sense on paper. But what I've seen is fourth person is it's adding to, to, to me from what I've seen. It's like adding another person because if you look at all of these, you have first person, which is one person perspective right there's only one person involved second person is when you add a second person to the mix there's only two people involved here and then third person seems to be because it, it, it just kind of makes sense in my brain i don't know if this is actually how uh people that you're understand. the third person and you're watching two other yes, people exactly you're the talk. third person and with fourth person it's exactly how it sounds there is now another person involved and how would that make sense because 
how can you have more than a three person dynamic? Um, so, so are you watching a person watching people talk? <laughs> no, no, uh, that would be really funny. Um, so the pronouns are one, someone, anyone, oneself, we, and us, um, which is kind of weird. So this goes into collective, like indefinite or, or collective personalities, multiple narrators, uh, kind of like multiple people speaking at once or like maybe like hive minds kind of a deal um, where it's multiple people speaking uh, almost like third person. Like here, let me, I had uh, something pulled up. You have an example? Yeah, that's, I'm going to search up an example. Um, my brain is breaking. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, right, I Googled it and it says, we ran out into the rain without even stopping to put on shoes. So it's it's speaking for multiple people, um, essentially, is what I've gathered here. So it's like you and someone else. You're you're talking about you and someone else to someone else, and someone else is witnessing it. So that would be four people. You know what I mean? And it says here. So you're uh, talking. Well, I was just gonna say real quick. It says here you'll never have a singular narrator. Uh. So honestly, I, I get a bunch of different mixed vibes from fourth person, which I guess kind of makes sense because it, it's a little weird. But yeah, yeah. What were your thoughts? I'm having a hard time wrapping my brain around this one. <laughs> so if you, it's like just the bare limit of you have more than one um, like narrator, that makes it a fourth person thing. Um, I kind of like here's a so like, do you know the two grumpy Muppets that ha they're like hecklers, they they're like old dudes, yeah, and they talk to each yeah, other that's about actually, the story. That might is be, that a is that it? That might be fourth person. Like again, I am a little unsure on this myself. I've just trusted what the internet has told me, and I've I've been getting mixed responses because I think at the end of the day, fourth person is when there are four people involved. So I think that can either mean four, not not four. I think that can either mean multiple narrators or multiple uh, characters. I think there just has to be four people involved for it to be fourth person. Um, and the the pronouns I think are what really do it. So you have to be referring to not just one specific person. You have to be re referring to like kind of something that's a bit more ambiguous a group of people it has to be yeah so either either a group or like something because right you know it has one self on here someone anyone so kind of like it could be anybody right where like if, if you were to say anybody would fall for that or something like that like anybody so... can, could do this that's kind of like a fourth person perspective because you're not referring to a specific person you're referring to like this gray blob, like it's a, it's a, it's a variable, you know, it could be anything. Uh, okay. You're, so you're not saying he or him, you're not saying the, their name, the, right? uh, the Avengers, the first one in 2012, when they, um, they're arguing on the ship, they're arguing with each other about like pointing fingers at each other. That's third person until, uh, Bruce Banner like grabs a scepter and he's like, "What are we? We're not heroes. We're just a bunch of uh, nerds in this aircraft, right?" Is that then switch it to fourth person because from, he's referring to the entire group? From what I've learned today, yes. Now, is that actually okay. like if you were, if we were to talk to a novelist who's been writing novels for ten years, would he say that it's fourth person? I've I don't know, and that's what I'm really interested in is like. I don't I don't know how loose and rigid these definitions are, um, but I do from my understanding, I do think that that would be fourth person because um, to me, it kind of makes sense. He's saying, you know, what are we, which is who is he referring to when he says that? Right. He's referring to multiple people. He's referring to and it, it, there's a little bit of question marks in there. Right. Because is he referring to just the people on the ship? Is he referring to all superheroes? Is he referring to everyone on at shield like i don't know 
you know so it kind of becomes this weird ambiguous thing that's up for interpretation so i i don't know yeah it's very interesting so do you think because what were, what were we talking about before this uh the discombobulate do you think that would be fourth person i i don't think so i think it'd have to still be i honestly think it's still like maybe he becomes oh, third person know. he becomes the third person observer for the guy that he's talking about so it's almost like dude we're is this third person, fifth person dialogue <laughs> we're the third person looking at uh sherlock holmes and then sherlock holmes becomes the third person narrator for the dude that he's talking about who's gonna have to recover for six months because he's gonna discombobulate him real bad um well he's not saying that to the guy he's just he's just thinking it okay so maybe like since it's a thought you hear it in maybe his mind. that is third person because it's a thought i yeah maybe but not. why is it not then first person because we've determined that thoughts are or exploring the thoughts of someone is a is a first person thing. Well, I again, I think it comes down to is are we putting ourselves in their shoes or are we observing them from outside? And I think that from the Sherlock Holmes perspective, we're still observing him even Dude, if he goes in. I think that this is first person because it's his <laughs> thoughts, second person because it's kind of like he's talking to us and third person because we're not actually there, we're just kind of observing it. You add that together, <laughs> That moment is a sixth person perspective. Bro, it's like eighth person squared. Bro. Yeah, it's I think it's I, it's the sixth person perspective. I think, Sherlock, it's just another testament to how freaking smart that guy is. I think he successfully discombobulated me in the process. Um <laughs> and I'm gonna need I'm gonna need six months uh, to recover. <laughs> um so So why did they call it a third person shooter then? Yeah, so I, I kind of wanted to open this up to uh, to like other mediums because I feel like a lot of these you can very easily look to books or movies, but I feel like it gets really interesting when you look at other mediums like games and uh, I'm not sure if this applies to like music or anything. Music could be an interesting uh, topic to dive into, but um, yeah, so first person games versus third person games i feel like these things might still apply like do you think uh because what usually when you're in a first person game it's more immersive for you to feel like you're the character i feel like whereas in a third person game i very much feel like i'm controlling someone else um yeah how do, how do you feel okay about, how do you yeah feel that makes games? sense like games use of this like when no, I, I think they're great you think they're great? <laughs> uh, when I play like, his, there's like Skyrim where you like actually create your guy. Um, but then there's other games where you're like playing as a character. But it, I feel like whenever it's first person, I'm able to feel like I'm that person way more um, than if I were to play like Mario 64 and I'm just running around as Mario. Like I don't, I don't see myself as Mario like at all. So I, I feel like the perspectives are pretty good in gaming as well um even though it is interesting because even in third person games you're still controlling the character you know like it's weird because if you're watching a third person movie it feels like you're you're someone outside looking in like you're outside the house and you're looking in the window at like what's going on inside whereas in the game it's like you're you're controlling the person inside so it, it doesn't really feel like you're observing because you're like contributing to it um so I feel like that is interesting. Um, yeah. yeah uh, I think a lot of, I think you're right. The, a lot of the perspectives are like pretty universally applicable across the thing, the different mediums. Yes. I am curious. I've never heard, I'm trying to think of a second perspective story. Yeah. Uh, like specifically in film. Cause like there are films that are like found footage style feature films. And that's very first person perspective told like via the camera that, you know, they're holding the experience, whatever's happening in real time. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Do, and then wait. there's lots of third person movies, but I, I can't really think of any second perspective movies where the movie tells you what to, what is happening. Yeah. So I, cause again, second person is really interesting to me. 
Um, I, I did see when I was doing research that a lot of second person stories are short stories. And I feel like there's a reason for that because second person isn't really something that can be a very long winded story. It can't be this really long thing. I feel like it has to be something that's personal and short. So I'm thinking about, you know, you know, the scene in Emperor's New Groove where he's like drawing on the screen, like, don't look at this guy. And he's like scribbling him out. He's like, look over here. Uh, um, uh, yeah, that would, would be would, second. Wait. Would that be second person? Because he's like talking to the camera. I or, guess so. Is, what, yeah, what is about he's, like he's blogging? talking to you? Because he's telling you, blogging would be second. Well, actually, I don't know. Uh, vlogging's a mix between second and like first. When, when we're the like, first you guys should thing is definitely second. Go down to the comments, subscribe, guys. Like, we're, is that second person? I mean, you should. I'm not like, going to tell you what to do, but you like, should. Do you remember like back in the 90s with like Malcolm in the Middle and stuff where he would like talk to the camera or, you know, we talked about She-Hulk. Yeah, she, he, she, he'd, he'd pause and talk to the... So breaking the fourth wall is actually more often a second person. Yeah, that that's kind of what I was saying when you mentioned it earlier. I'm like, I think I have this realization that fourth wall breaking, it, it might be a second person thing, which is interesting because you can't tell a story with just second person. But I think second person has the ability to like amplify a story, almost like you're putting salt on it or on, on a meal, you know. Um, I I still am so curious of of how it would be like to make a feature film that is strictly told in second person. Yeah, like, I think that second person is either done for comedic value or it's a very scary thing. Because I had because you're being told how to think or feel, and somehow yeah, that's like I mean, dangerous. So, um, have you ever had guided meditation? Because I feel like that might also be a good example. Yeah, I've done person. that before. Yeah, um, where someone tells you to like relax your your arms and let your elbows go. Yeah, but then then they'll be like, and, and you you can feel your body sinking into the chair, and you know. You're and then you have to fart or burp, and then it's awkward because <laughs> you're like, I don't feel anything like what well, you're saying. It's weird because I feel like it really works on me. But I, I again, I feel like that's the risk that you take with second person is that if the person like watching or listening, like if they're not into it, if they're not like willing to role play and because it's not necessarily role play, but like if you're not willing to go along with it and kind of like uh agree with it and relate to it then it's gonna those are huge bound like it, it's there's a big disconnect there you know um but i feel like when people sure. are able to because i've had guided meditations and things that have like really helped me and like i feel like hip, hypnotism might fall into this a little bit i don't know anything about hypnotism really but uh people that are really able to just like listen to people and like really like grab a hold of what they're saying and like just really become it um like true immersion uh in a way you know maybe that's what hypnotism is it's just second so person at its second finest. second per person perspective requires the most attentiveness to to consume content yes uh which because I feel like, I think because you're one there. of the active participants yeah and it's it's so hard to do successfully i would say um so yeah, man. Uh, I think second person is honestly the most interesting one out of the four. Um, you would think fourth person would be the most interesting, but it's actually kind of boring because I just it just kind of think that well, f four is a crowd. No, no, wait. <laughs> five is a crowd. Five is a four is a party. Four is a party. Five. Know, five is a farty. Get it out it's of here. Party. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then <laughs> six is a uh, Sherlock Holmes. So. I think one of the reasons that second person is so intriguing is because it's very um, unexplored, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have written down here that it has a lot of potential. Um, and I think it does. Mm. Like I, And again, I think D&D &D might be what you're looking for in terms of like getting a full story out of second person. Dungeons and Dragons might be the way to experience that. Um but I, I just don't know how that would Dude, imagine a horror film where like the monster or creature or whatever like stops and like fully acknowledges that there's an audience. Dude. That would be 
I'm trying to, I feel like that exists. Has that happened? Like, like, does Pennywise ever, like, wink at the screen? Like, I'm like, I'm trying to think now. I'm like, is there ever a time? Um, I'm, I'm not sure, but yeah, the, you know, like, 4D theater horror movies coming your way. Shrek 8, the the last Shrekening. It's going to be like a horror movie Eight. with 40. <laughs> Shrekening. Oh <my laughs> it's going gonna, gonna to be like the, I, there, I've actually been to, like, a couple 40 theaters in, um, like theme parks like universal and disney um but yeah that that's an interesting thing I, would that be what, what perspective would 4d theaters be because it's clearly like acknowledging that i exist uh but without pronouns so uh i don't it, know because it, it's reverse person because the movie's trying to get into your head Oh, that's it's like VR kind of is a reverse person perspective. Instead yeah. of you consuming the story, the story consumes you. Yeah, I feel like VR is like zero person because like it, it, there's no like middle ground. It's like you're just them. You're not like having to put yourself in someone's shoes. You're just in your shoes the whole time. Yeah. And I think that makes sense. I think it would be more first person. Did you yeah, you put I on agree. I agree. the shoes and the hat of, of someone else? But yeah. 4D theaters, I do think that's more of a that's a reverse person. That's a zero person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the movie's trying to like get into like make you think certain things. It's trying to like get into your head um instead of you getting into the character's head. Um that's so interesting. Well, um that's that's the story dive this week uh i hope you guys learned something about perspectives because i think they're very interesting and there's actually uh there's some more to be talked about with perspectives that i might bring back up later in the future that's more specific but um i think it's important when you're making a story to actually know what the, each of these perspectives are for because i feel like they all play a role and I, you know, the now next time you watch a movie or a show or read a book, like try and notice when they switch things up, um, because they do. It's not always yeah. gonna be third person. It's not always going to be first person. Um, like try and notice these things, and like try to notice second person because second person is weird. I'll try and keep my eyes out for fourth person because I I don't know. You know what? I don't really know what fourth person. I'm looks gonna like, do something. So. <laughs> what? I declare. Homework. I am assigning homework. Uh -oh. This is to me or to the listeners. Uh, all of us oh, is man. To, to consume a movie or a show or something, and we'll talk about it next episode and see what kind of perspectives. Okay. Like what you're talking about. Yeah. Basically, I took what you're saying, and it's homework now. Okay. There will be a test. Sounds good. Next week we will catch up on it. Everyone watching, like, make sure you say down in the comments, like. What would fifth person be? Like, let us know. I, I, I have no idea. Is, yeah. Is fifth person... Uh, actually, I won't spoil it. I'll, I'll let you guys decide. But yeah, thanks for, you, thanks for joining, everybody. Uh, uh, thank you for supporting us all, all these weeks. We're going to keep story diving it up every Friday. And, you know, make sure to subscribe, give us a like, all that stuff. And we'll catch you next time. Bye.